Here's an idea. Dubstep is avant-garde musical genius. In case you're not exactly sure what dubstep is, we've planned a little light switch rave to make sure that we're all up to speed. <clears throat> Ahem. So. Dubstep. It's a kind of dance music and it originated in the UK around 2002. Its main characteristics are really complicated syncopated rhythms, a crazy array of non-musical sounds, and oh man, the wub. Dubstep tends to polarize, meaning if it isn't your thing, it's noisy, aggressive, repetitive, and inharmonic dross. But if it is your thing, it's noisy, aggressive, repetitive, inharmonic perfection. Enjoy it or not though, Dubstep's characteristics might actually put it in the running for avant-garde genius. Even if we're not all fans, dubstep does make a certain amount of sense to modern ears. After techno, hip hop, punk rock, and jazz, we have a context for all of the crazy sounds that make up these wubs. Sine waves, square waves, massive kick drums, VCOs, VCFs, noisy distortion techniques, complex tempo business. This stuff is really hard to make and to listen to. And to non-modern ears, this stuff probably would sound like just noise. A hundred years ago, there were a bunch of people who were doing some of the same things that Vexed and Datsik and Skrillex are doing now, but they were considered totally bizarre. Not like charming pop culture bizarre, but like fringe of the art world bizarre. In 1924, George Anthau wrote the Ballet Mechanique, which was one of the first instances where music making machines were synchronized with live performers. Incidentally, it was also probably the first time that anybody complained about electronic music not actually being music. In the 1940s, Pierre Schaeffer invented music concrete which used everyday sounds alongside and in place of musical instruments. But the gentlemen who would have loved dubstep the most are the Futurists. Based in Italy around the turn of the century, the Futurists embraced technology, violence, and speed as the basis for their art. They were also anti-feminist fascist warmongers, so they weren't exclusively awesome. The Futurists' best known composer, Luigi Russolo, argued that all sounds are musical, and that noise is really just a meaningless label. He even held noise concerts with his brother and their collection of weird, imposing looking noise machines. <laughs> Incidentally, it was probably the second time that people argued that this was not music. And he imagined a futurist orchestra, which played what he called families of noise, all of which are featured prominently in dubstep. But the futurists, they were just a short-lived movement at the fringe of the art world. Their performances were small affairs, at which I'm sure many monocles were dropped. They weren't even critically well-received. After one performance in London, the Daily Sketch newspaper printed a review that read, one listened in considerable distress only sufferers of complete deafness should attend the next recital. That is harsh. So clearly the Futurists never became as rich and famous as this bespectacled young man, or played to packed arenas like Bass Nectar does. This is probably a clear indication that Futurists were ahead of their time, while dubstep is right on time. We will stand in a room and willingly listen to for hours and have a great time because we can easily connect it to our recent musical past. The past 30 years of pop culture has expanded the sonic landscape to include what the most avant-garde 20th century composers imagined exactly. Rousselot wrote that music must break out of this limited circle of sounds and conquer the infinite variety of noise sounds, which was a radical notion. But look at us, dubstep does exactly that. And it's not a small avant-garde space either, it's literally worldwide popularity. In just under 100 years, we have gone from dropping monocles to dropping beats. That the popular sonic landscape is this huge is amazing, but it might lead you to wonder, what happens next? It always feels like we've reached the end of what is possible in the arts. But that's kind of what creativity is all about, right? Trying to figure out what more we can do. And dubstep shows that popular music is always expanding, frequently into areas that we used to think were completely unlistenable. And maybe it is only a matter of time until the number one hit is a remix of a fork caught in the garbage disposal. I would listen to that. What do you guys think? What crazy sounds are gonna find their ways into pop music next? Let us know in the comments. And if you've been watching the show, you know exactly what I'm gonna say next, so I'm not gonna say it. It was a post-scarcity party last week. Let's see what you guys had to say. Yes, I meant survival mode. Thank you, the mini hilly, and literally everybody else for reminding me. I'm sorry. Greg Aaron 89 points out that both in Minecraft and life, it might not actually be that fulfilling if you don't have to work for what you get. And while I agree as far as Minecraft is concerned, I'm not so sure about life. 
infinite everything all the time seems kind of neat. Building on that point, Ire of Silverpine says that maybe creativity and novelty would be the new currency, which a lot of post-scarcity theorists seem to agree with. So, interesting. Dixavid makes a point about the MakerBot having more potential than current manufacturing technology and makes that point by comparing it to photography, which is really interesting and super cool. Sir Chrissy makes a really smart point about the fact that we might already live in a post-scarcity economy with regards to information and data that we can just copy endlessly and not really lose any resources. Jared Jaynes doesn't think that it's possible at all to reach a post-scarcity economy, but that we can get very close and then mentions my favorite Radiolab episode, so. Vadi1980 points out that they think people will transition to more arts-oriented activities if they don't have to worry about working to get their resources, which I like to think is true. Stygian White and OzzyGP11 had an amazing conversation in our last video. It's a little long to get into right here, but you should go check it out. It is so great. Thanks, guys. Great conversations about the last episode also on G4TV, Kotaku, and Boing Boing. We will put some links in the doobly doo so you can check it out. And last, but certainly not least, Biel Manita has delivered a fanfic. And it's pretty good. So stay tuned for updates.